Hi, it's Katrina. Number 10. Underwater people. The Bajau people of Southeast Asia have developed an incredible genetic adaptation. Their bodies have actually changed to be able to survive longer underwater, like a superpower. A new study has proven that these people have developed larger spleens in order to help them dive, so they can hold their breath for longer. For generations, the Bajau have survived by diving and collecting shellfish off the ocean floor. To understand why this adaptation occurred, we need to look at the history of these ancient people. The Bajau have traditionally been a nomadic and seafaring tribe, surviving off the ocean in coastal areas along the Philippines, Indonesia, and Malaysia. There are about one million of these people scattered throughout this part of the world, and for the past thousand years or so, they've been living on houseboats and traveling from place to place, living directly on the water and very rarely venturing to land. They get everything they need from the sea, and so as unbelievable as it may seem, their body has adapted to give them biological scuba tanks. It works like this. The spleen is an organ in the human body about the size of a fist. It removes old cells from the blood and helps cycle oxygen. When somebody is diving, they need more oxygen in their blood so that they can hold their breath for longer and dive deeper. The Bajau evolved to have bigger spleens so that they can dive underwater way longer than any other group of people, holding their breath for several minutes while diving to depths of over 210 feet. To compare, the average person can hold their breath for about a minute and dive to about 20 feet. The big mystery right now is that scientists don't understand if this is some kind of mutation, a process of evolution, or just what exactly is happening to turn these humans practically into mermaids and mermen, merpeople. Number 9. The Reverse Flow of Time As much as we like to believe we know things, the truth is that we know very little, especially when it comes to something like the flow of time. Most scientists will agree that time moves only forward, but then there are people like Albert Einstein who said that time is nothing but an illusion. Well, actually, he wrote, the separation between past, present, and future is only an illusion, if a stubborn one. Today, a team of physicists has suggested that with better understanding of the quantum system, time could move both forward and backward. The reason time can only move forward is that the universe is a closed loop. Picture all of existence curled into a ball, and everything is moving perpetually forward. This suggests that the universe is never able to return to an earlier point. It only goes forward. But this doesn't necessarily have to be the case. Scientists from the University of Bristol say that space itself, light and particles, could theoretically evolve backward and forward at the same time. The only thing is that it would never affect human experience. We are considered macroscopic systems, unable to perceive quantum superpositions or temporal evolutions. Time for us can only move forward. But at the fundamental level of the world itself, constructed of quantum systems, things could move backward to a previous state. You could never actually go back to a previous point in time, like a specific date in history, but the universe could fold backward and push time with it. At least this is more or less what the scientists are saying. The truth is that they have no idea how in the world this would work, but they do know that backward flowing time does seem to be a possibility. Number 8. Fungus on Mars A team of fringe scientists used images taken by NASA's Opportunity rover to show the world that there are mushrooms on Mars. They say the fungi is direct evidence of life on the red planet. And although these scientists are at the very edge of acceptable research, and the notion of mushrooms on Mars seems ludicrous, their paper was accepted for publication in a peer-reviewed journal. The lead author of the study is Ron Joseph, a die-hard believer of life on Mars. Even though the bulk of the scientific community disagrees with him, claiming he's actually working against science, he's loud enough to draw a lot of attention to his theories. But here's the deal with the mushrooms. What Joseph saw in the images are probably just a bunch of rocks that kind of look like mushrooms. Even right here on Earth, finding mushrooms is pretty difficult. For mushrooms to grow, they need to be in a very specific environment, with the right temperature, the right amount of rainfall, and perfect humidity. On Mars, there is no rain or humidity. It's a barren desert, devoid of life. Still, the issue is that the mushrooms in question are on another planet, and nobody can confirm or deny their existence. No scientist can prove one way or the other that mushrooms are growing on Mars. Number 7. 
venomous humans. If you've ever laid in bed at night and wondered why humans aren't venomous like rattlesnakes or scorpions, I have some good news for you. The truth is that humans could actually evolve to produce venom. Scientists with the Okinawa Institute of Science and Technology Graduate University looked at reptile and mammal DNA and discovered something shocking. It turns out both these classes of animals share the same genetic foundation needed to produce oral venom. What that means is that humans or elephants or what have you could become venomous in the future. It would take a few thousand years minimum, but it could definitely happen. The science is actually quite simple. When the team looked at the Taiwan Habu vipers, they compared certain genes that work alongside venom genes, things that protect cells from stress and regulate protein modification. When they cross-examined these genes with those of mammals, they found that we have our own versions of these genes. Plus, salivary glands tissue is quite similar to snake venom glands. What this means is that we have the same ancient foundation, one which could allow us to create venom in our saliva and spit at people. What scientists don't know is how exactly this could happen or how long it would take. They think that under certain ecological conditions, mice would probably be the most likely to start creating toxic proteins in their saliva. There's actually a chance that in a couple thousand years, mice and rats might be venomous like Komodo dragons. If you could produce toxic venom, would you? Or would you rather just keep your ordinary saliva? Let me know your thoughts in the comments, and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Number 6. Crop Circles Crop circles are real. It's a phenomenon that has puzzled scientists, intrigued the population, and freaked people out for decades. And while scientists frequently chalk crop circles up as pranks or hoaxes, the truth is that they don't know everything. First of all, crop circles are almost always found in the United Kingdom, specifically in the southwest of England. The earliest crop circles have been dated back to 1678. There is a legend from folklore which says an English farmer told one of his workers that he would rather pay the devil to cut his oat field than give the man the fee he wanted. And so Satan came up and cut his grass, leaving bizarre patterns to disturb the farmer. But it wouldn't be until 300 years later in Australia in 1966 that a farmer in the town of Tully witnessed a flying saucer. He said the alien craft rose out of a swamp and flew off into the stars. When he went to investigate, he discovered a circular patch of flattened reeds and grass. Clearly, it had been made by an alien spaceship, and it was from this point on that crop circles became part of pop culture. Starting in the 1970s, simple circles began to form all throughout the English countryside, but the number of these strange circles and their complexity increased exponentially up until the 1990s, when the most elaborate were produced. These were crop circles illustrating insanely complicated mathematical equations. But by 2000, they had pretty much dropped off the map. We don't know if there was a rush of alien visitors for 30 years, if one group was responsible for the pranks, or if farmers were doing it themselves and simply got bored and stopped. What do you think crop circles are? Let me know in the comments below. Number 5. The Appendix Scientists and doctors have wondered for many years why the appendix exists. Most think of it as a useless piece of evolution, kind of like the hind leg bones that some whales still have from their days of walking on land. But the appendix may just be on its way out. According to a report in the journal Case Reports and Surgery, one out of every 100,000 people are now being born without an appendix. That small, squiggly-shaped sac near the large intestine could, in a few generations, be a thing of the past. But why does the appendix even exist? Over 1 in 20 people get appendicitis when their appendix becomes inflamed, and if they don't remove it, they can die. It seems redundant to have an organ that kills 1 out of 20 humans without emergency surgery. Charles Darwin believed the appendix was an organ from when our ancestors ate leaves, which helped them digest food. Over a century later, in 2007, William Parker from Duke University School of Medicine discovered that the appendix could serve as a reservoir for gut bacteria to help food digestion. It's also become clear that the appendix has a high concentration of lymphoid tissue, which helps the immune system, and it's also true that the appendix has been inside mammalian bodies for 80 million years. Clearly, the appendix is used for something, it's just that scientists still can't figure out the full importance of it. 
We also don't know why more and more people are being born without it, or why it frequently self-destructs and tries to kill its host. Number 4. Devolution Scientists have recently discovered that we have less DNA than our ancient ancestors, and they can't figure out why. In a new study, researchers found that human beings have been losing DNA ever since we evolved from apes. Even our most recent early human ancestors had substantially more genetic data than we do currently. This bizarre discovery has raised numerous questions, such as where did all that genetic information go? Why did it go in the first place? And what difference has it made? And unfortunately, scientists don't have the answer to any of these questions. The researchers were led by a professor named Evan Eichler from the Department of Genome Sciences at the University of Washington. He and his team sequenced the genomes of 236 different people from 125 different populations. The results showed that Homo sapiens as a whole have lost 40.7 million base pairs of DNA. This is over the past 13 million years. We still have 3 billion base pairs of DNA, but what in the world happened to the other 40 million? It could be junk DNA, things we didn't need that we shed over time, but at least 27.96 million of these base pairs were found to be unique, responsible for certain genetic traits that we don't know. So either we lost DNA that we didn't need, or as we move into the modern world, we are getting less advanced. Number 3. Mother Meteor one of the most challenging things that scientists have tried and failed to figure out is where exactly the building blocks of human life came from. We know that there are four main building blocks of DNA, which are responsible for all life on the planet. These four main building blocks are the genetic makeup for everything that lives and breathes. And where these building blocks are, life typically follows. Although scientists can't say for sure where these blocks came from, they have gotten some new information that's turning the scientific community on its head. The four main building blocks, adenine, thymine, cystocyne, and guanine, have all been discovered in meteorites that impacted the Earth. In other words, the ingredients that make up every part of your body may have landed on the planet from outer space millions and millions of years ago. There is still a lot of information that needs to be analyzed, but right now, it really looks like our DNA came from outer space specifically from chemical reactions inside interstellar molecular clouds. Number 2. One Resilient Community A rural community in Ireland survived just about every threat thrown at it for a solid 1,000 years. The community lived through the European Famine, the Black Death, the Irish Potato Famine, the warm medieval climate anomaly, and the Little Ice Age. But what really caught the attention of scientists was just how well the people in this tiny community fared during various plagues. Very few deaths were ever reported, and the people here almost seemed untouched by the larger disasters crippling Europe. This community is seemingly immune to death. Researcher Gil Plunkett from Queen's University Belfast studied the site up in Ireland's Antrim Hills. It's deserted today, nothing but a bog with a few abandoned houses and forgotten pieces of old farming equipment. But for 1,000 years, up until the 20th century, the community always had people in it. The residents only left in the 1900s in order to seek better opportunities in the modern world outside. Gill did a bunch of tests. He studied pollen, looked at peat core samples, figured out what plants they grew over the millennium, but there was nothing to say why the community remained impervious to every disaster that crippled everywhere else in Ireland. The only thing scientists can think of involves the one way in which this community was different from the rest. You see, there were no landlords. Up until the later part of the 1800s, right before everyone left, those in the community were free. They could change their lifestyle anytime, grow whatever crops they wanted, abandon farming altogether and go hunting, and never had to pay rent. This is the only thing they did differently, and they beat all the plagues and all the famines, defeated only by modern civilization. Number 1. Tabby's Star Tabby's star baffled astronomers for years. Scientists watched in disbelief and confusion as this star, located in the constellation Cygnus, became brighter, dimmer, and brighter again. Nobody could figure out why the star was fluctuating in its brightness. The thing is that stars are measured here on Earth by how bright they are, and the only reason their brightness dims 
is when a celestial object passes in front of them. But this was weird because it was happening so frequently, it was almost as if satellites were moving in front of Tabby's star. Astronomers even suggested some kind of alien megastructure in the star's solar system that makes random passes in front of it. Recently, scientists decided it wasn't an alien megastructure after all, but just cosmic dust. The mystery had been ongoing since 2011, completely stumping astronomers for a whole decade. And now, all these years later, they say it's nothing so big and complicated as an artificial mothership, just dust. Huge clouds of dust floating in front of the star. But of course, this could all just be a cover story for a very real alien megaship. Thanks for watching! What do you think about all these unsolved mysteries? Let me know your theories in the comments below, and be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. See you soon! Bye!